गाइज थैंक यू सो मच फॉर योर विजिट टू आवर फैमिली वी नीड योर सपोर्ट इन लव प्लीज प्रेस सब्सक्राइब बटन एंड बेल आइकन इट्स टोटली फ्री गुड लक फॉर एक्सचेंज नाउ इंजॉय है गाइज आज हम बात करने वाले हैं द लव सॉन्ग ऑफ जी अल्फ्रेड पर फ्रॉक अ डीपर लुक इन टू द मीनिंग एंड फॉर्म नाउ द प्रॉब्लम इज दिस इज अ मॉडर्निस्ट पोइट्री एंड वेन वी आर एनालाइजिंग अ मॉडर्निस्ट पोइट्री देर इज अ बिग 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 प्रॉब्लम दैट we feel bored because if we don't know the what abs, absurdist movement and other things what modernist uh, poetry is and characters we feel bored but if you know these things uh we enjoy the poetry we we can have the real essence of the poetry okay to chaliye ab hum baat karenge ek ek cheezon ke bare mein baat bhi karenge and uh, i hope ki aap log ise enjoy karenge so keep on watching first of all let's talk about modernism what is modernism okay what is context of modernism in this poem okay in this uh, poem by t s eliot planes subways trains cars and world war first created dramatic shift in day to day modern life that often people uh left people feeling lost and left behind questioning their identity here is a big big question mark okay of identity they don't understand why we exist do we exist or why we exist what is the purpose of our life so that's why they create some works like the wasteland and waiting for god art jisko padhte hue hame bahut problems aati hain ya hame shuruaat mein samajh hi nahi aata ki ye likhi kyu gayi hai what a waste thing it is but later we come to know that it represent the whole idea of modernism how a person is thinking that time okay so तो हमें पता चलती हैं ये चीज़ें बट बिफोर दैट वी नीड टू स्टडी द डीपर थिंग्स अबाउट मॉडर्निज्म इन दिस वर्क वी विल सी मॉडर्निस्ट पोइट्री इज ऑफन डिफिकल्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड द सेम थिंग इट इज डिफिकल्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड द वेटिंग फॉर गॉड आउट एंड द वेस्ट लैंड जस्ट बिकॉज वी द स्पीकर इज यूजली अनसर्टेन अबाउट हिज और हर ओन ऑन्टोलॉजिकल द इसेंस नेचर बी लाइक इन द वेस्ट लैंड यू विल फील लाइक इफ यू आर रीडिंग द पोएम you will feel like what is written here there is you know mismatch between the words and the sentences and the events but later you will find that in modernism people are living the life like that okay what is happening uh that is happening for no reason and uh, something happening it has reason but people don't know what is the reason and that's why they are they are having lots of questions in their brains and it becomes hodgepodge and then they write a poetry like that that looks hodgepodge but that represent modernism i hope you are getting me it or uh, i hope i'm not speaking like a modernist poet okay to simple si baat ye hai ki jab hum modernism ki baat karte hain to hum confusion ki baat karte hain confusion kin kin cheezon ka hai confusion hai unki identity ka okay आइडेंटिटी का उनका अपना एक एग्जिस्ट जो करते हैं नहीं करते हैं कहाँ करते हैं कितना करते हैं ओके वट वाई डू आई एग्जिस्ट दैट इज़ अ क्वेश्चन फॉर मॉडर्निज्म द स्पीकर इन मॉडर्निस्ट पोइम्स कैरेक्टरिस्टिकली रेसल विद द फंडामेंटल क्वेश्चन ऑफ सेल्फ सेल्फ हु आई एम ऑफन फीलिंग फ्रेगमेंटेड एंड एलिनेटेड फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड अराउंड हिम और हर in other words a coherent speaker with clear sense of himself herself is too hard to find in modern poetry often leaving the reader feeling lost if you want if you want to read a uh, clear sense go through the romantic period if you read uh, the poetry of wordsworth you will feel like he is writing so smoothly everything is clear in his brain but when you read t s eliot okay as a pound you will see that they are disappointed they are uh, lost they are feeling alienated and there is hodgepodge in their brain and they are just pouring it out and that's why they are representing modernism okay next biographical context let's leave this okay biographical context because uh, I have already made a video on uh, biographical context and um, video on modernism so you can search modernism by Kaushik on YouTube and you will find my video on that okay now let's talk about elements of the poem 
and uh, tomorrow i will be uh, you know going through the explanations so read th read these things and uh, definitely uh, you will understand that work so elements of poem dramatic monologue write down in your diary open your diary you can write down a dramatic monologue presents a moment in which a speaker discuss a topic and in doing so reveals his or her personal feelings to a listener or reader that is called dramatic monologue if you don't know dramatic monologue what is dramatic monologue uh, you can think like if you are sitting uh, sitting alone and you want to discuss a topic with yourself also and then you are uh, just you are pouring your feeling out only this speaker talks here you can see only this speaker talks and intentionally or unintentionally reveals information about himself or herself okay since the main focus of a dramatic monologue is this personal information and not the speaker's topic a dramatic monologue is a type of character study the speaker who is the speaker in this the poem centers on a balding insecure middle-aged man he expresses his thoughts about the dull, uneventful, mediocre life he leads as a result of his feelings of inadequacy and his fear of making decisions. Unable to seize opportunities or to take risks, especially with women, he lives in a world where that is the same today as it was yesterday and will be the same tomorrow as it today. So these are the questions in his brain and as you, uh, if you want to know, about T.S. Eliot's life, his uh, life was his uh, life was not quite good with his women. He does try to make progress, but his timidity and fear of failure inhibit him from taking an action. Without hair, without hair, without hair. Okay, the setting: the action takes place in the evening in a bleak section of a smoky, foggy city. Oh my god, that, there was a, another, there was a balding head, okay. And uh, I'm also losing my hair. So I, I must care my, about my hair. This city is uh, probably St. Louis where Iliad grew up, but could, not, could also be London where he moved to. The action takes place in the evening, you can see him. Huh? In a bleak action of a smoky, foggy city. The city probably is St. Louis where Eliot grew up but could be London also where he moved to so two places Eliot probably intended to leave the setting ambiguous because it was unimportant and could be any city anywhere so you can see that uh, here the city represents all the cities of that time in modern modern period it could be any city means people are feeling the same the characters J. Alfred Prefrog, the speaker, a timid, over-cautious, middle-aged man. Not man, it's man. He escorts his listener through streets in a shabby part of city, past cheap hotels and restaurants, to a social gathering where the women he would like to meet are conversing. However, he is hesitant to take part in the activity for fear of making a fool of himself. The listener, an unidentified companion of Perfrog, the listener could also be Perfrog's inner self, one that prods him but fails to move him to action. As you can see, I have already told you that it was a dramatic monologue. The characters, the women, women at a social gathering that Perfrog would like to meet but worries that they will look down on him or reject him. Just because he is losing his uh, hair. Is it true? I have seen lots of uh, lots of bald guys who have the most beautiful girls. But it was T.S. Eliot. Okay, let's see. But if you don't wear a shirt, how can a girl like you? Can you see this guy who is not wearing a shirt and sitting there and gazing at uh, these women? Who are strolling there but I don't think if you don't wear a shirt and sit like this with a cigarette no girls want to talk to you okay just kidding <laughs> the lonely man in uh, shirt sleeves 
okay leaning out of the window and smoking pipes they are like frog in that uh, they look upon a scene without being a part of it the smoke from their pipes helps form the haze over the city that serves a metaphor for a timid cat which could very well be performed himself.